Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPTE podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. And as we're recording this, this is the first episode of 2024. I just want to say thanks. Thanks for sticking with me as we go through all this content. I hope it's helpful to you as we go through all of the material that you need, give you the tools you need to dominate on test day. So I've got a special giveaway for you today. This is kind of fun. So with 2024, they, the FSBPT is adding a section on the NPTE regarding regenerative medicine. So regenerative medicine, what does this mean? This just means that they're adding content about things such as stem cell therapy or pr protein, or sorry, platelet-rich plasma therapy. Those types of items, I, I've compiled quite a, I guess, a good synopsis of the material that is likely to show up on test day regarding that. And I've got it for you for free for a very limited time. So this will be for an extremely limited time. If you'd like to access this free material related to regenerative medicine, you've got to go to ptfinalexam.com slash podcast, sign up there, and then we will send you the link where you can watch the video related to the synopsis of regenerative medicine and the questions that you'll likely encounter on test day. So they have not indicated precisely how many questions are related directly to regenerative medicine. All we know is that it is included now as one of the key topics on the NPTE. So if you want to get those questions right, you'll definitely want to do some studying in the regenerative medicine category. And so we'll talk about that. Uh, I think you'll really enjoy the content I've got for you. Again, that is totally free, but it is for an extremely limited time. So you've got to go over to ptfinalexam.com slash podcast where you can access that. Uh, again, very limited time, so you can access the synopsis on all of the things you need to know for regenerative medicine. So today, in fact, I do have a practice question related to regenerative medicine. This is in relation to the musculoskeletal interventions section on the exam. So as you recall on test day, and really what we're doing in this podcast is going through each of the content outline areas. Uh, certainly, this is no different as we talk about the musculoskeletal system. Uh, there's somewhere between 44 and 54 questions related to MSK. And among those will be regenerative medicine type questions. And so I've got a good question for you here. Let's go ahead and cue this up. Before I do, just a quick reminder though, we are starting our crash course. We run that three weeks before every test day. If you haven't signed up yet, it's still not too late. So be sure to sign up for our PT and PTA crash course three weeks before every test day. Uh, you won't wanna miss out. All right, here we go. Here is your practice question for today. Uh, as per our usual, I will read through the question, give you a moment to respond, and then we will talk about it together. A patient received autologous chondrocyte implantation in the left knee two weeks ago to treat mild focal osteoarthritic changes. Which of the following interventions will be most appropriate for the patient during this stage of rehabilitation? So a patient received autologous chondrocyte implantation in the left knee two weeks ago to treat mild focal osteoarthritic changes. Which of the following interventions will be most appropriate for the patient during this stage of rehabilitation? Option one, active assisted knee flexion in long sitting. Two, partial range squatting while standing with a cane. Three, stationary cycling with moderate resistance. And four, treadmill ambulation at a self-selected pace. So we've got one, active assisted knee flexion in a long sitting position. Two, partial range, or so par, partial range squatting while standing with a cane. Three, stationary cycling with moderate resistance. And four, treadmill ambulation at a self-selected pace. All right, so this question is related to autologous chondrocyte implantation, which is kind of a fancy word, fancy term for uh, re-implanting chondrocytes or cartilage tissue back into the patient. Now, the key with autologous chondrocyte is that it's focusing not necessarily on, on say, pulling a plug of cartilage, plant, pulling it from here and grafting it there. That's what's called the osteochondral, uh, what is it? The osteochondral uh, allograft transplant procedure. That's the OATS procedure. Uh, that's where you're actually pulling cartilage from point A and putting in point B. Rather, the autologous chondrocyte implantation that's talking about taking the chondrocytes and culturing them and then reinserting them in generally a liquid form, although research is moving towards more of a matrix formation where in a laboratory they create a chondrocyte matrix. In any case, you take these, these chondrocyte cells from the patient, you culture them, and then you reinsert them back into the patient. 
So ostensibly you'd bring this from a, a non-affected cartilage site. So a non-weight bearing or unaffected portion of the knee and then reinsert it back at a, uh, the affected portion or the graft site of the knee. So the key with this though, is that it requires some type of synthetic membrane to hold the chondrocytes in place. So much like with meniscal repairs or even with really any cartilage repairs, you've got to protect that thing quite significantly during the first weeks of rehab. And so therefore the most correct answer here would be active assisted knee flexion and long sitting. This would be on the list of approved activities during this phase of rehabilitation. Now, why is that? Well, it's because you really have very severe weight bearing and range of motion precautions during the first six, really up to 12 weeks after any type of articular cartilage, uh, any type of articular cartilage procedure, but certainly in this case where there's some type of synthetic membrane and then you want that, uh, really, I like to think of it as a chondrocyte slurry or a chondrocyte smoothie. You need that to mature and it just, it's going to take time. And so therefore active assisted knee range, or sorry, active assisted knee flexion in long sitting will be your key or the first intervention you would do during these phases. Oftentimes these folks will be prescribed continuous passive range of motion so as to maintain motion, but without stressing or, or, or really causing any damage to the synthetic membrane while the chondrocytes mature. So on this list, we would include passive or assisted range of motion, certainly some light range isometrics you could do, you could do uninvolved leg exercises, but generally speaking, you are going to avoid weight bearing activities, especially in an unprotected setting. So like partial range squatting while standing with a cane, standing with one hand or with one singular cane is not going to offload the knee sufficiently during this phase where you have such significant weight bearing precautions. Plus, if they are weight bearing, they'll likely be locked in a protective brace so that they are in full extension so as to not damage any of the synthetic membranes associated with the autologous chondrocyte implantation. So any type of, of weight bearing activity would be severely, limit, severely limited, certainly for the first six weeks and up to 12 weeks, just because you have to wait for those chondrocytes to mature. So partial range squatting is out. Stationary cycling with moderate resistance. This fits into the resisted movement activity. And again, this is going to be uh, almost entirely contraindicated until at least six weeks post-op just because you don't want to excessively load the knee. And so stationary cycling with moderate resistance, this would typically wait. In, in fact, in this case, uh, the Kisner protocol describes waiting up to six months to begin cycling type activities where you're starting to load in a low impact environment. And so I guess the long and short of all this is that autologous chondrocyte implantation is a very lengthy rehabilitation process just because you have to wait for those cells to mature. And then finally, the last incorrect answer option is treadmill ambulation at a self-selected pace. As we described, weight bearing would be severely limited during the first six weeks up to 12 weeks, and it would require some type of protective bracing. Even if you did do any weight bearing, it's probably going to be partial in a protected brace. And so uh, treadmill ambulation, you'd have to be in a there'd have to be a lot of caveats here. You could possibly do it in an aquatic setting where you're partial, partial weight bearing. But again, you'd have to be extremely cautious about the loading placed on that knee. Uh, generally speaking, you're going to do a lot of uh, very low impact isometric or open kinetic chain type activities with uh, really just passive or active assisted movement, not, not resisted movement. And so that'll be during that maximum protection phase, which will last for sure up to six weeks. And then it could potentially last up to 12 weeks just because it takes forever for these things to mature. So there you go. There is the autologous chondrocyte implantation. Uh, just a little picture. Those of you who are watching the YouTube version, you'll see uh, there's an image, image showing what it looks like to have that synthetic membrane and then the autologous chondrocytes that are placed or the culture, the, the chondrocyte slurry that is placed underneath that membrane. It, it's a little bit like jello. You have to let it set. So it has a mold and you, you put it into place and it just, it just takes time for it to, to really mature. And so uh, that's why, in fact, uh, when you look at return to sport protocols, typically these folks, their return to sport is not until like nine to 18 months, almost double the time of what you'd expect after like an ACL reconstruction or a meniscal repair, just because you have to give that, that uh, those chondrocytes plenty of time to mature. 
All right, so that's it. That's your practice question for today. So just a reminder, again, if you want the, the free synopsis that I've got on all the regenerative medicine content, uh, just go over to ptfinalexam.com slash podcast, sign up, and you'll get an email link. It'll, it'll show you where you can find it, and you'll be able to easily grab that, review that. Again, it's the synopsis of things that are most likely to show up on the test. Also got a practice question in there for you. I think you'll enjoy it. Again, that's for an extremely limited time, so we want to make sure to do that as quickly as possible because that uh, is going to go away here pretty quick. So be sure to sign up for that ASAP. And then uh, in the meantime, though, if you are listening to this far down the road, so let's say you're listening to this like two years down the road or something, uh, you will be able to find the regenerative medicine content within the other content we have in our primary courses, like the premium course, the VIP course, or, or other courses. So certainly associated with our cohorts, we have this available. But in any case, I hope you have a fabulous day. Thanks so much for spending it with me. Be sure if you haven't yet, leave us a five-star review over on Google Play, Apple iTunes, or Spotify, wherever it is you're listening to this podcast. And I'll catch you all in the next episode. Thanks, Will Crane fist pumps all around. 